heads for Supreme Court for a review of High Court decision. The Interior Minister says Friday 4th November is not a public holiday. Live on GBC 24 and GTV, this is News R. My name is Yoko Kwakuchre. And I am Ufriwa Dako. The Electoral Commission says it has completed a review of the judgment of the High Court in the case of the Republic versus Mrs. Charlotte Osei and Electoral Commission ex-party Dr. Papa Kwesi Indum. The Commission says, having carefully studied the contents of the judgment, it respectfully disagrees with the High Court judge's decision on several essential legal and public policy grounds. We bring you details of the story. The Commission, in a statement on Monday, said it is of the firm conviction, backed by the law, that candidates seeking the highest office of the land must take full responsibility for ensuring that their nomination forms meet the standards in form and substance required by the law. The Commission is further of the view that falsified signatures on nomination forms constitutes a matter for criminal investigation and are not mere anomalies or clerical errors which should be pointed out to candidates for correction to be effected. The Commission believes that in other jurisdictions, presidential candidates must ensure the accuracy of the information on the documents which they present under oath to public institutions. Failure to place this burden on the shoulders of the candidate has serious implications for the country's democratic growth and electoral justice in the interest of public policy and the credibility of the electoral process, the Commission has filed an application at the Supreme Court to quash the High Court's decision to seek clarity on the relevant aspects of the law on candidates' nominations. The EC says it believes it is in the overall national interest and on the ground of public policy that the Supreme Court provides clarity on this matter. A judgment from the highest court would effectively bring finality to the issue once and for all. In the interest of national peace and cohesion, the EC has therefore implored the Supreme Court to determine the application expeditiously in accordance with the earlier directive of the Chief Justice for the sake of the electoral calendar. An Accra High Court has adjourned Tuesday the 1st of November. The hearing of the suit challenging the Electoral Commission over the disqualification of Hassan Ayariga as a presidential candidate for the All People's Congress. Lawyers for both the EC and the APC pleaded for more time to file their statements of case. Last Wednesday, the court presided over by Barbara Tetechawe ordered both parties to file their statements of case simultaneously by Friday. The lawyers, however, failed to comply with the order and have requested for additional time. Lawyer for the EC, Thadea Sori, explained that he was challenged by the numerous suits filed against the commission. Counsel for Mr. Yariga Maxwell Logan also told the court that he was indisposed. Mr. Yariga is seeking to quash his disqualification from the 2016 presidential race. He is also seeking a declaration that under CI 94, the EC can only proceed to disqualify a candidate after it has notified him of an invalidity and the latter fails to amend. The Electoral Commission will from today, Monday, October 31 to Monday, November 7, 2016, accept applications from media houses interested in observing the presidential and parliamentary elections in December. All media houses that wish to observe the election are requested to submit names and other personal details in the prescribed format to the Commission by the close of Monday, November 7, 2016. In a statement, the EC says all requests for accreditation should be sent through the regional representatives of the Ghana Journalist Association and then forwarded to the communications unit of the Electoral Commission or by email 
at mediaoffice at ec.gov.gh. The EC says accreditation tax will be given to only those who have formally applied. It says any request submitted after the deadline will not be considered. Thousands of people throng the Akujo Park at Tema Community One in the Tema East constituency to witness the launch of the party's Greater Accra Regional Rally. The NPP is targeting 58% of the Greater Accra votes come December 7th for a convincing victory. The flag bearer of the party, Nane Kufuado, used the occasion to tell Ghanaians that he is fit to lead the country. All streets leading to the Akojo Park in Community One were choked with people. These people turned in their numbers to show solidarity to the party. The regional rally dubbed Operation Win Greater Accra is part of the overall measures to win the December general elections. Available statistics indicate that the party that wins in the Greater Accra region automatically becomes the winner in the general polls. Currently, the MPP occupies 14 out of 34 parliamentary seats in Greater Accra, but the party has targeted 25 seats in this year's election. Again, the party hopes to clinch 58% of the total votes cast in the Greater Accra region. All 34 parliamentary candidates of the party were jointly introduced by Greater Accra Regional Chairman Mr. Ishmael Ashite and the flag bearer of the party, Nana Kufadu. The Greater Accra Regional Chairman Mr. Ishmael Ashite said it's about time the NDC left power. The flag bearer of the MPP, Nana Kufado, said Ghanaians are the only people who can help him rule this nation. We're going to build a new economy in Ghana. We're going to build a new civilization in Ghana that is going to be the light of Africa and of the world. That is the task before us in our civilization. Making jobs, bringing good schools, pushing our children forward to make Ghana the beacon, the black star of Africa. That is our destiny and that is the destiny that we're going to. He said he is more than ready to rule Ghana. According to the New Patriotic Party, it will not be complacent in its campaign, but will continue to work hard to clinch victory come December 7. The flag bearer of the New Patriotic Party, Nani Kufu Ado, says he will run an honest and transparent government when voted into power. Addressing chiefs and people of Pung Katamansu constituency, Nana Ado said he will guard the country's finances for the overall development of the nation. The Pung Katamansu constituency seat is one of the many seats the MPP hopes to take from the NDC. According to the MPP, 
they have laid down plans for the people of Kou Patamasu to receive its fair share of the national cake. Top of the agenda is to redemarcate the constituency when the party is voted into power. The chiefs of the Kou Katamasu traditional area, in their numbers, welcomed the MPP flag bearer and his team at the district assembly hall. The traditional priest in the area bestowed a symbol of victory on Nana Ekufu Ado. <laughs> The Paul Manche need Tete Utu ask the electorate to go out in their numbers to vote for the right person who can lead the nation to prosperity. Nane Kufuadu introduced the MPP parliamentary candidate, Mr. Solomon Apia, to the constituents. Nane Kufuadu said his campaign message is issue based and expressed hope that Ghanaians have listened carefully, which will translate into a greater fraction of votes for the MPP. Leaders, instead of concentrating on administering the money of the country in the interest of the people rather see a way to put the money in their pockets. Nikon, I want you and the people of Bonn to understand, I did not come into politics to amass wealth at the expense of the Ghanaian people. That's not the reason why I'm in Ghanaian politics. He asked Ghanaians to help ensure that the December polls is free fair and transparent, addressing a large crowd at the Methodist Park at Pung. Nana Ekufuado said the free SHS policy will surely work under his government. He said he will remain committed to all promises when giving the nod to lead the country as president. This year we retire John Dramani Mahama. Nane Kufuado revealed that the MPP has fashioned out a lot of policies and programs coupled with a competent and able team who rapidly developed the country. <laughs>as part of its mandate to give equal access to all political parties to sell their message to Ghanaian voters, the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation GBC, working in partnership with the NCCE, will organize a debate for presidential candidates for the 2016 general elections. The chairman of the Political Broadcast Committee of GBC, Mr. Beniza Mpabin, spoke to GBC24 about the debate. GBC is mandated by the Constitution, specifically Article 55, to provide equal opportunity to all political parties and presidential candidates to sell their messages, policies and programs to the electorate. So we have that mandate and it does not exclude presidential debates. We have two formats, one-on-one -on -one presidential encounters with an audience. We have one set being in the studio, and that audience will be a gender and socially inclusive one. Then we have two locations outside of the studio linked live to the studio. All these would have the opportunity to ask the presidential candidate questions. For now, we'll say all but one. But at least we've spoken to all of them and we are almost there. We 
were very careful about going out to announce dates when the candidates have not fully committed. So we have gone very far and very soon we'll have them all on board and then we'll, we'll, we'll get going. So once a candidate is declared so lawfully by the Electoral Commission, we'll bring them on board. If we started with one candidate and the courts asked the EC to bring on board some of the disqualified people, we'll just schedule them and then they will come on board. So our doors will be open to them until practically it becomes impossible. The wife of the Vice President, Mrs. Matilde Misa Arthur, has inaugurated a community library for the people of Mamubi, a suburb of Accra. She charged the people to own the facility and put it to maximum use. The Mamubi Community Library, situated at the Community Cultural Youth Center at Kaukudi, is stocked with over 5,000 books. These include textbooks, reference materials and fiction. There is a vernacular collection as well as books by Ghanaian and African authors. There are 10 book apps of Kindle with 100 books on each. Additionally, there are five computers and an activity area for young children where they can draw, put puzzles together and play board games. Also, a day in each week, I read would take children, especially those who cannot read, through lessons and activities that would help them acquire reading skills. At a ceremony to open the library and hand it over to the community and a five-member committee constituted to manage the facility, the wife of the vice president, Mrs. Matilda Misa Arthur, says since 1988, she has helped to acquire libraries, books and computers for many schools and communities across the country. However, her decision to provide a library for children in Mamubi and surrounding areas and the community was as a result of the request, zeal and commitment exhibited by the girls who are members of Achieves Ghana, an organization that takes care of the needs of young girls in Muslim communities in Accra. On the 28th of June, I had a concert with these children. There were children from Kinder Paradise, Pram Pram, Basics International Choco, and Achievers Ghana. I have worked with the Achievers Ghana, and I know their zeal and commitment to education. I know how far those girls can go if given the needed push. At the end of that concert, I decided to give the children of Mamobi a state-of-the-art library, because children everywhere deserve the best. The library is housed by the Ministry of Culture. Mrs. and Mr. Arthur was grateful to all organizations and individuals who helped to provide the library. Members of the community and other stakeholders thanked Mrs. and Mr. Arthur for making education of children a priority. Theodora Mereto, GBC 24, Accra. The Ministry of the Interior says Friday, November 4th, which will be observed as National Farmers Day, is not a statutory holiday as being speculated in the media. A statement signed by the Interior Minister Prosper Bani said the statutory Farmers Day holiday, which falls on Friday, December 2nd, will appropriately be declared a public holiday. Hello again, my name is Maurice Ogbete. Time to get updates from the business space. Now, the Millennium Development Authority, MIDA, has postponed its planned bidders conference for six shortlisted entities that have shown interest in the private sector participation of the Electricity Company of Ghana, ECG. MIDA said it will announce a new date for the process. Workers of ECG, however, say they will resist any attempt by MIDA to privatize the power distributor. We'll keep an eye on that story and bring you latest now the amansia rural bank has declared a total of three hundred and ninety thousand one hundred and thirty four ghana cities as dividend for 2015. this comes on the heels of a pre-tax profit of one million four hundred and sixty four ghana cities translating into 26 percent over the 2014 figure 
The Amansia West Rural Bank with a head office at Antoakrom in Amansia West District of the Ashanti region can now boast of nine agencies. Being a bank that believes in the security of its customers, it has put up a police tent city project beyond Puano in the Amyang Kwanta Mansung Kwanta Main Road. The project, yet to be officially handed over to the Ghana Police Service, will provide a 24-hour security checkpoint on that section of the road. Since its operation, the incidence of armed robbery has reduced in the area and commuters now feel secure whenever they ply the road. At the 31st Annual General Stakeholders Meeting, the Vice Board Chairman Nana Akra Kofi Donko said though 2015 was a challenging year, the bank was able to increase to nearly 1.5 million Ghana cities. Also, the bank spent 87,155 Ghana cities on its corporate social responsibilities, while shareholders' fund rose by 25% to 5,969,000. 497 Ghana cities over the previous year's figure. One of them was the internal controls. We made sure that every person that came into the system was managed and managed well. Two, we, we saw that there were a whole lot of expenditure, uh, electricity bills, uh, water, and then fuel. Now, what, what we saw that they were leaving the lights on after close of work. We had to call them and tell them that, okay, one, make sure you put off all light, all gadgets before you go home. When you come to work, don't put on air conditioning until after 10 o'clock when the rooms begin to heat up. So we, we, so we, we did some of these things to reduce costs. The Kumasi branch manager of ARB Apex Bank, Mr. George Anno, advised the staff to ensure that they do not compromise on professionalism when dealing with customers. The bank used the occasion to reward 14 of its staff for their long and dedicated service with plaques and also undisclosed sums of money. Still business live on GBC 24. Now, Al Hassan Idrisu, a porter at the Nima Pig Farm Trotter Station, is the proud winner of a 40 inch Samsung LED flat screen TV under the Royal Aroma Consumer Promo. Mr. Idrisu, a resident of Nima in Accra, said the thoughts of purchasing an LED TV has never crossed his mind. In his heydays, Al Hassan Idrisu used to travel to Europe to do business, but is now doing menial jobs for survival. When the 70-year-old, a resident of Nima, went shopping at the local market for the week, little did he know that a 5kg bag of Royal Aroma could completely transform his TV viewing experience. Mr. Idrisu, father of six and a lover of rice, found a coupon in a 5kg Royal Aroma rice which won him a 40-inch LED Samsung flat-screen TV. The septuagenarian says he has never dreamt of buying a digital TV, let alone winning a promotion that will enable him have one. Mr. Idrisu and his family could not hide their excitement when a team from Olam Ghana, importers of Royal Aroma, paid him a visit. <laughs> His wife, Haja Geika, who looked overwhelmed, described Royal Roma as a rice with great taste. The Royal Aroma Consumer Promo started a couple of weeks ago and will end in December 2016. The promo is Olam Ghana's way of saying thank you to its loyal customers. The promo offers customers the opportunity to buy the 5kg pack at affordable price. Prices include TV sets, kitchenware and other electrical appliances. The Royal Aroma Consumer Promo is in partnership with Melcom. A kiosk portage is the grand prize for the promo. 
at this point to go back to the interbank market where the city depreciated uh, by peso against the pound sterling and stabilized against the US dollar and the euro. On the international commodities market, light crude is trading at $48.62 per barrel, while cocoa is trading at $2,763 per ton. Now, gold is also trading at $1,262 an ounce. With insurance news brought to you by SIC Live. Now, Ghana's insurance penetration stands at 1.8%, Morocco at 6%, and Egypt at 7%. Insurance experts blame the low penetration of insurance service to the segregation of mainline insurance from pensions and health insurance. They say that countries like Egypt and Morocco combine the three when calculating insurance penetration. Reason is that if you go to other countries, like I said earlier, on places like South Africa, Morocco, Egypt, and co, when they talk about insurance penetration, it is insurance premiums, it is pensions premiums, if there's health insurance, it is all involved because it's under one regulator. So they have penetration like 6%, 12%, but in Ghana, it is only insurance. Pensions is separate, health insurance is separate, so definitely it is low. But beyond that is the fact that it is the existence of disposable income in the pockets of people that will push them to buy insurance. So the person wants to pay the school fees of their children, the health needs, the transport, then if there is something left before he thinks about insurance, if there is nothing like that, he will not buy insurance. So let's see, as, as the economy does well, the penetration of insurance would improve, but it would not improve like these countries who have health pensions and insurance all together because for us it's just insurance. You don't also think that insurance brokers have not done uh, much in terms of educating the, the general public? That, that is a problem. That is a problem. Education has not been a lot. The education is rife in the middle class. If you look at the, the older generation, if the person is not working in a company where they use an insurance broker, he will not know about the, 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 the existence of an insurance broker. So the education is, is, is part of it, and we are working hard at ensuring. This is one of the reasons why we organize this program. Welcome back to the health segment. A Senegalese delegation is in Accra to study Ghana's health insurance scheme. The visit will provide the team with a deeper and better understanding of the NHIS with the aim of improving access to health care in Senegal. Ghana began the implementation of the National Health Insurance Scheme in 2004 to ensure equitable access to basic health care in the country. The National Health Insurance Scheme, according to the authority, currently provides health care insurance cover for about 70% of Ghanaians who visit the hospital. The scheme has enrolled over 11 million people, constituting 41% of the national population. At their first meeting, the management of the NHIA and the Senegalese delegation shared their achievements, challenges and discussed the way forward. A member of the Senegalese Monitoring and Evaluation Division of the Universal Healthcare Agency, Mr. Alhaji Dio, said in 2012, 
80% of the Senegalese population do not have access to health care, but due to the implementation of the Universal Health Care Agency, many of them can now access quality health care. The leader of the delegation, Mr. Mama Dusengo, said the one-week exposure to the operations of the NHIS would help improve upon their services. In the domain of the evaluation and in the domain of the biometric There are some aspects of the health insurance in Ghana that we want to really look at mm -hmm. because Ghana has experience in it. That's the biometric registration and the monitoring and evaluation mm -hmm. and then the quality control. The acting chief executive of the NHIA, Mr. Nathaniel Otu, said the one-week deliberation will benefit both countries. Ghana's NHIS is one of the celebrated health insurance schemes on the African continent. Um, periodically, we have countries visiting us uh, to see what we are doing in order to take lessons back to improve their systems. In the current year, the NHIS has come up with more than two, three very, very far-reaching technical initiatives. Obviously, countries visiting us is a vote of confidence in what we are doing. But we don't sit and be complacent because there's still a lot more we have to do. The National Health Insurance Scheme was established under Act 650 of 2003 by the government of Ghana to provide basic health care services to persons resident in the country through mutual and private health insurance schemes. Yaira Lawe, GBC24, Accra. Good evening, some update from happenings in the world of sports. Some few fellow Sampa. Cyril Ajakofi has for the second time been crowned heavyweight champion of the Man Ghana Muzzle Building Competition. Ajakofi has danced equal to the record set by Kofi Salia, who won it in 2008 and 2009. Ajakofi will assume the captainship role of the national team for all international competitions next year. Ghana's biggest annual bodybuilding championship, Man Ghana 2016, has been held in the sports hall of the Accra Sports Stadium. 30 of the finest bodybuilders in the country participated. They competed in the lightweight, middleweight, bantamweight and heavyweight categories. The athletes were made to go through the symmetry round, compulsory poses which included a display of the athlete's front double biceps, front lat spread, side chest, side triceps, back double biceps, back lat spread and the abdominals and thighs. There are also the comparisons and individuals posting routines all to give the judges the opportunity to make their decision. Before the final verdict, there was the pose down where the top competitors did a freestyle posing including the dance pose. In the bantamweight category, Michael Panna was adjudged the best overall winner. William Kankam beat Emmanuel Fletcher and Godwin Fimpong in the middleweight contest. Cyril Ajakofi received the crown after beating veteran Mustafa Richardson and Joseph Ufori Queen. The win means Cyril Ajakofi has equaled the record set by Kofi Salia in the 2008 and 2009 editions. Cyril says he wants to set a new record by keeping the crown for a longer period. I already said to people that I'm going to keep it this for six times. I'm going to keep it this for six times. To let nobody that that thing for Ghana before. I'm going to set some record that nobody going to break it. The president of the Ghana Bodybuilding and Fitness Association, Abdul Hayati, was happy at the turn of events. As I can say, beyond my expectation, uh, even with the invited guests that came around, um, we had uh, many as about uh, 60 new bodybuilders competing. Then it means that it's good for the sport. Um, the judges came out with their result. Um, Siri Kufiaja is Man Ghana 2016. Um, the association stands like that. First three winners in the various weight categories will be representing Ghana in next year's International Bodybuilding Championships. The director, the Deputy Director General of the National Sports Authority in charge of technical development, Saka Akwe, has appealed to the IGP and the Minister for Interior to support sports development in the country. To be the leader of delegation for Team Ghana for Brazzaville, IGP, most of our players, Team Ghana, were from police service, male and female. I have three apples. Number one, 
I want you to use your good offices to see the Honorable Interior Minister to revive the CISA games. In fact, you are leading in sports in Ghana. Most of your players are aging. So therefore, there's the need for you to enlist more sportsmen and women. And the last but not the least, your handball team trains at Azuma Nelson Sports Complex. Your other teams train outside the police depot. I want to take this opportunity to kindly request you respectfully to upgrade the police depot sporting infrastructure. <laughs> police, you need a multi purpose sports court. The NBA regular season is already underway with two major conferences returning to action. We'll bring you some highlights of some of the games played. Hello, good evening. Time for some arts news. My name is Valerie Danso. Films are a source of entertainment and a powerful tool for educating people. Ghana's culture is being invaded and taken over by the increasing number of foreign movies and telenovelas on the local television channels. The Deputy Minister for Tourism, Culture and Creative Arts, Madame Jifa Gumashi, is challenging GBC to be the torchbearer for the movement to bring back Ghanaian values onto the screens. Humor. Very great, isn't it? Ghana's and film industry came into being as far back as 1948 when the Gold Coast Film Unit was set up. In 1971, the Ghana Film Industry Corporation was established. It did a lot to promote national culture and sell Ghana's image abroad. Some internationally recognized Ghanaian films that the nation can boast of include John Confess Goldie and two of Kowansa's movies, Love Brood in the African Pot and Heritage Africa. In the past, Ghana produced some very educative and entertaining TV series, including The Ultimate Paradise, Inspector Bidiako, Taxi Driver, Things We Do for Love, among others. I'm 21 years, 21. I suppose you are in school. No, I'm in Legon. So you are in school? No, I said I'm in Legon. But Legon is a school, so you are in school. It's an university. A university or what? I mean, you are in school. Right. Only are uh, airwaves that are uh, inundated with foreign material. It's also all aspects of our culture. We frown on our food, we frown on our dance, we frown on our values. We are quick to embrace and copy everything around the world without paying attention to ours. But it is in protecting and celebrating what identifies us and sets us apart from the rest of the world, that we bring something to the table. GBC, you can change the story, you can set the pace. GBC can be the, the torch bearer once again. I mean, you, every TV station or media house in this country has people who learn from GBC. So once again, GBC can raise that flag really high and, and, and set the pace for all of us to, to follow. With the passage of the film bill into an act, there would be the establishment of a national film authority, which will, among others, facilitate the production and marketing of good films that tell Ghana's story to its people and the outside. And that's all in the news for now. Thank you so much for watching. We are back at 10.30 with news tonight. Good evening.